Alright, on to probably one of the more difficult things to show, the alternate form of the dot product. Um, there's an easy way to do this going back to work equals force times distance, but that's not how this textbook is going. And either way you'd have to do um, this picture proof. Um, whether you start off with the alternate form and go back to the um, U1V1 plus U2V2 form, or you go the other direction. Well, we're just going to go the other direction. So to solve this alternate form, we're going to take vector u and vector v and draw it in this picture. You know, here's vector u, here's vector v. The only thing that can happen is u cannot be a scalar multiple of v. So they have to be pointing in slightly different directions. All right, so if we're going to do this setup, we have this nice little triangle. It's not a right triangle. We have an angle down here that I'm interested in because I really would love to find the angle between two vectors you know, to see how they're differing in their poles or forces. All right, so um, one vector I added in here was this vector, and it's literally v minus u. Now remember, when you do v minus u, you start your vector at u, and you end your vector at v. It's opposite direction. All right, so if we have this set up, it looks like a nice triangle with an angle. Law of cosines seems to be able to work. So let's see here. Law of cosines is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of the angle. Now the angle I'm interested in, of course, is theta, but I'll call it c for now. So we're going to let this be angle c. That means this is side c, and then these two are a and b. So side c, um, it's the length of that side. Um, this just denotes the uh, vector itself. So if I want to know its length, I really need to go and find its magnitude. And the same for vector u down here and vector v up here. So this side is going to become the magnitude of v minus u is equal to the magnitude of v squared, oh, I forgot the squared, plus the magnitude of uh, u squared minus 2 times the magnitude of v magnitude of w, not w, back up, u, magnitude of u, cosine of the included angle, in this case cosine of theta. Now you'll notice I'm writing really small because this is going to take up a, a lot of space. So let me change colors. Um, this is the one that's going to cause me a little bit of trouble. I have to figure out what v minus u is. Well, v minus u, right way up here, vector v minus vector u, is the first one, oops, v minus u, the first components. So this would be v1 minus u1 comma v2 minus u2 and then I want to find the magnitude of it which is this squared plus this squared under a square root but if it's under a square root this square is going to cancel it so we're going to get uh, v1 minus u1 all squared plus v2 minus u2 all squared uh, that'll take care of the left hand side is equal to well then it's the magnitude of v and the magnitude of u well that's just u squared 1 plus u squared 2 v squared 1 plus v squared 2 v sub 2 squared yeah so we're going to get u1 squared plus u2 squared plus v1 squared plus v2 squared. And the square root goes away because each one of those terms is squared. Now I'm going to leave the rest for now. The negative 2, magnitude of v, magnitude of w, cosine of theta. And there's a reason for that. Um, this actually turns into what's called work, but we'll talk about that in a second, or later. All right, now we just need to simplify this mess. 
So if I expand these two out, that's the fun part, you're going to get v1 squared minus 2u1v1 um, plus u1 squared plus, now that's the first one, now v2 u2, we're going to get v2, oops, v, not u, v2 squared uh, minus 2u2v2 plus u2 squared. And that would be this one expanded out. Now I'm not going to write the, well, no, I'm not going to write the other side equals, well, this thing here. The nice thing about the expansion is a lot of things are going to cancel. On this side I have a u1 squared. This is the left-hand side of the equation. This is on the right-hand side of the equation. So if I subtract it from both sides, it's gone. Same thing for v1 squared. Same thing for v2 squared. That's over here. And the same thing for u2 squared. They all go away. So we're left with actually very little. You have negative 2 u1v1, negative 2 u2v2, and then on the other side you get negative 2 times all this mess. Well they each have this negative 2. So the trick I'm going to play is divide everybody by negative 2 and you end up with u1v1 plus u2v2 is equal to the magnitude of v the magnitude of w, not w, silly. Uh, give me my eraser. Didn't even realize that. Mm, yes, not w. That's u. There we go. U. Uh, magnitude of u, cosine of theta. So then it just becomes a game of recognition. This, if I denote this right, this is u2, is the dot product between u and v. So we get u, ah, darn it, u's vector dotted with v's vector. And I'm just going to change some order over on the other side. Is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. It's legal because they're scalars. Uh, times cosine of theta. So this becomes known as the alternate form of the dot product, which becomes kind of important in proofs, um, but I definitely would not calculate the dot product um, in this fashion unless I knew what the angle of theta was. Now we have two forms of the dot product. One of them is the scalar um, calculation, the other one is a scalar times an angle, cosine of an angle calculation. Now this one is much easier to work with given um, we know the components. So if we know the components of u and v, this is a much easier way to calculate out the dot product. This one is um, if you're given the angle between the two vectors, or you're looking for the angle between, would be the use of this one. So if we know something about the angle or looking for the angle between two vectors, we really want to use the second one. If we just have the components and we're looking for the dot product and we're looking for that scalar number, and then the original dot product definition is much better. All right, so let's look at um, the angle one. Usually, we're looking for the angle. So if I have two vectors, uh, just making them up, u is equal to um, 4, 7, v is equal to, uh, let's make it horrible, uh, negative 3, 5. That's not horrible, but you know, you get the idea. So if we're going to use this formula to find the angle, the two pieces I need to find are the dot product, well, three pieces actually, the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. So I'll just go and find them separately. So u dot v is the easiest one. It's going to be 4 times negative 3 
and 7 times 5. So that would be 23. Yeah. So u dot v is the scalar number 23. All right. Magnitude of u is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 7 squared. So 16 plus 49, which would be 50, 65. So this is the square root of 65. And then the magnitude of v, let's see, that would be the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared, which would be 9 plus 25. Uh, so this is the square root of 34. Now, even if you could break these radicals down, um, it's actually easier just to leave them as big, scary-looking, ugly radicals. Because when we try to type this into a calculator, the less pieces, the better. All right, so if we take this formula and substitute things into it, we're going to get 23 is equal to the square root of 65 oops, times the square root of 34 times the cosine of theta. The dot product is equal to the magnitude times the magnitude cosine of theta. So my goal here is to solve for theta. So we're going to divide both sides by those square roots. To start getting theta a little bit more lonely. And I'll change the order of this. So you're going to have cosine of theta is equal to the dot product. That's where the 23 came from over the square root of 65, the magnitude of the first vector, and the square root of 34, the magnitude of the second vector. All right, and then to get theta by itself, we're just going to get rid of cosine. And the only way to get rid of cosine is to use cosine inverse. Now be careful, cosine inverse, remember, only works in the first and the second quadrant. All right, so these are gonna go poof, generally, um, and we're going to get theta is equal to the cosine inverse of this mess. So I'm going to type it in as it would be in a calculator. I'm going to write it down the way you should type it in a calculator. So this will be parentheses, 23 divided by, you really need a parentheses here. There's two pieces in the bottom, and if you don't put the parentheses here, it'll only divide by the first one and multiply by the second one. And we really want both of them to be in the bottom. Um, remember, the calculator will give you the first parentheses on that 65. you got to introduce the second one. And then we'll get the square root of 34. And again, the calculator will give you the first parentheses. You have to give it the second one. Unless you have one of those really brand new calculators that generally do it right, hopefully. Their notation is a little weird. All right, so you type this in your calculator and you get an answer. And then we could talk about, is it the right answer? So cosine inverse of 23 divided by parentheses square root of 65 times square root of 34. So 60.7. So this angle here, theta, is equal to 60.7 degrees. All right, so let me draw a little picture of what this is kind of looking like. Uh, it's small coordinate axis here, so I'll put it here. Ooh, that's really thick. That's all right. I'll live with it. All right, and then vectors coming off of it are going to be four seven, so that would be four this way, seven up that way. So you get a vector that looks something like that. And then the other one is negative three five. So that would be negative 3, positive 5, someplace up here. And what we've calculated was that the angle between these two vectors is 60 degrees. And that seems reasonable. So is it always going to give me the correct angle between two vectors? Now remember, cosine inverse only works in the first and the second quadrant. So it gives you angles between 0 and 180 degrees. 
So if I have a vector pointing in this direction and a vector pointing in this direction, the cosine inverse is not going to measure this angle. That's too big. It's always going to measure the angle between the shorter angle, the less than 180 degrees. So because it's less than 180 degrees, you're always going to get the right angle with this calculation, which is kind of nice. And the formula for this, if you wanted just a direct formula rather than going through solving, would be theta is equal to cosine inverse of the dot product, remember that was the number that was on the top, over the magnitude of the first one, first vector, and the magnitude of the second vector. So you can use this as a direct calculation of theta.